thank you for joining me on the journey. This is Completed Christianity, so welcome back. Next episode of Being Complete, and today is Second Day Misunderstood Verses, and we're going to be doing our series on the Sermon on the Mount, and we're going to we're going to bounce around here in, in this a little bit, and we're not just going to completely go verse by verse, but we're going to start out with a particular point on Matthew 5, 19, and we are going to be talking about being greatest, great in the kingdom, great in the kingdom of heaven. So, let's take a look at the verse. Backing up to Matthew 5, 17, read this. Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah, law, or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete or fulfill. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one yod, jot, or tittle shall pass, shall, shall by no means pass from the Torah law until all be done. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign or kingdom of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great, in the kingdom of the heavens, reign of the heavens, kingdom of heaven. So, there's a lot of things we could talk about here. I just do a whole series just on these three verses. But the thing we're going to look at here is great in the reign. And so, what do you got to do to be great in the kingdom of heaven? Well, he says that you got to you got to keep these commands these commands so that's the context here so if you if you break one of these commands if you break these commands and teach others to do so like habitually then you'll be least but whoever does and teaches them whoever does and teaches them these commands and what are these commands these commands by context are the torah or the prophets and the Torah the prophets the they're one in the same the the there are passages in the New Testament that say talk about your law talking to the Jews your law and says this well the the there's two two places like that and those particular passages don't come from the law they come from Psalm and Isaiah. And so this this rendering here, the law or the prophets, the law or the prophets are the commands. The law, the prophets, together, they're the commands. And so if we even but even if we shorten this like some some people have the, the thought of, if we shorten this just to the Ten Commandments, if these commands are just Ten Commandments, there's one of the Ten Commandments that Christianity as a whole that they don't keep. Even though many Christians, at least prior to the last 10 or 20 years, that they will they'll, they'll protest that the Ten Commandments need to stay like in government buildings, government lawns, and things like that. But then there's one of those commandments that they don't keep and that's the one that the word says to remember which is the sabbath the father's shabbat in leviticus 23 he says these are my appointed times and then he talks about the weekly sabbath so the weekly sabbath is the father's appointed time it's not it's not jewish it belongs to the father and he kept it himself at creation and he blessed that day and set it apart from the rest of the days and so the sabbath this modern teaching that oh the sabbath is done away with that is exactly what it is it is a modern teaching the reformers knew no such teaching the reformers the believers of the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, these people, 
they were Sabbath keepers. They believed in the Sabbath laws. When the law, when the law says not to work or cause anybody else to work on the Sabbath and to have an assembly on the Sabbath, that's what these people believed. They believed in Sabbath keeping. Now, for the most part, that they were still under the deception that the uh, that Rome had put in place that it was changed from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. And uh, and then now we have the teaching that the apostles in the first century changed it from the seventh to the first. But that's not true because in the fourth century, Constantine makes a degree, decree that changes it from the seventh to the first. And so he wouldn't be able to do that if it had already been changed, you know, three, three centuries before. So, the, the reformers, they were Sabbath keepers, and they just did it on the wrong day, according to Scripture. And there were, and there were cries of that we should be keeping this on the, on the seventh day, and... Luther, right here, Luther, he had kind of like a associate pastor, if you will, secondhand man that took over when, when Luther went to, to prison for a while uh, for preaching the gospel. So, so this guy, Karlsdat, he takes over, and, and Karlsdat, he's, he's a Seventh-day Sabbath keeper. And, and he begins to to make changes that are, that go further away from Rome because like Luther was still performing the mass well Carl's dad did away with that and Carl's dad was on his way to uh, to switching over to the seventh day Sabbath when Luther came back kind of spanked him put him to bed and then we continued on with the way Luther wanted to do it and and some of these things Luther the when Luther was younger, the mistakes that he made, by the time he was old, he recanted a lot of things that he did and said and wrote. And so, the even coming up to the time when, when I was a kid, we had these blue laws that were still in effect where on Sunday, most things were closed. All, pretty much all retail was closed. You couldn't go shopping and so you would drive around on 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 Sunday and there's pretty much empty parking lots everywhere and that that goes back and it foreshadows uh, shadows back to these commands to be great in the kingdom or to keep the commands or to keep the law of the father which is everything that the Father says, every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So from Genesis to Revelation, we're to keep everything he, he says in the application that we're given. The only thing that ever changed from what we call Old Covenant, Mosaic Covenant, to New Covenant, the only thing changed that was the priesthood. This is what the book of Hebrews is about, the change of the priesthood. And but the, the the law is the same. Okay? The law is not a covenant. The it's just like if uh if we have a real estate agreement, a real estate agreement or a covenant, a covenant is an agreement. If we have that agreement and and we decide to change the terms of it, it doesn't change the law. This is the same thing that's happened here. The 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 covenant the the Mosaic covenant it was just overlaid with the new covenant and the new covenant is that we're not that our sins aren't passed over by the the blood of bulls and goats, but our sin now is passed over by the blood of the spotless lamb that Yah sent to us. And so if we want to be great in the kingdom, as the verse says, 
then we are to keep every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Psalm 89, 34, my covenant, I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Comments of opposition are welcome. Just don't say anything dumb like we're not under the law. We're under grace because you've been taught to use that verse outside of the bounds of its intended context. Subscribe now. Smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notifications of all future videos.